I'm not sure how many of you remember the interview that Jen Uger had with Ro Khanna prior to uh, the House voting on bipartisan infrastructure, because this was when all of us were screaming at the top of our lungs, please do not vote on bipartisan infrastructure if you're a member of the House before the Senate votes on Build Back Better, because if you do that, you're going to give away your leverage and they're going to have no reason to support Build Back Better. Well, um, turns out we were right. There were only six progressives, members of the squad, who voted uh, against bipartisan infrastructure. Everyone else went along with it. And what happened? Fast forward to today, Build Back Better is dead. So uh, before this happened, Jenk Uger asked Ro Khanna, why would you vote for this? What, what's the point? Uh, you know, what assurances do you have that Manchin isn't going to change his mind after you give him what he wants? And that is this corporate giveaway in the bipartisan infrastructure bill. And Ro Khanna said that he believed that uh, the president had some sort of a deal with Joe Manchin and that he believed that even if, you know, they give him this corporate giveaway, they're going to um, still vote for a Build Back Better. Well, that was completely disproven. And so Jen Uger is going to ask him about this. And this was a really interesting um, interview here. Uh, credit to Jen Uger for holding him accountable. And also, even though I disagree with Roe here and I'm very disappointed in him, I give him credit for still engaging with people uh, who are critical of him. I mean, both times that I brought Roe Khan on my program, it was after I was talking shit. Like, he reached out. So this is someone who is not afraid to engage. So even if we do disagree with him, and it, it hurts my brain to think of the strategic miscalculations that he makes time and again. He still is a good actor. He's a good guy. I just wish that he would maybe take advice from some people on the left. I don't know. I don't know. So uh, let's go ahead and watch this. For all of us, that's an interesting idea. Of Sorry, let me go back. All right, welcome to the conversation. This one's going to be very interesting. Congressman Ro Khanna is back. He's also got a book out. It's called uh, Dignity in a Digital Age, Making the Tech Work for All of Us. That's an interesting idea of that a progressive uh, legislator has to bring in uh, the rest of the country, even though he represents Silicon Valley. Obviously, there's some interesting votes in Congress, a lot to talk about. Uh, Congressman Khanna, welcome back to the TYT. Thanks for having me. Uh, no problem. So, uh, Ro, uh, before we get to the book, a uh, lot to talk about uh, since we last uh, talked. So, I agree um, with that emo dragon for that sure. That was the day of the vote on decoupling infrastructure and build back better. Uh, and we thought it was a bad idea. We, as in uh, here at TOT, I did. Um, and, and that if we decoupled it, we would not get build back better at all. Uh, and there was the philosophy of trust Biden. And so, that obviously didn't work. Uh, now Joe Manchin has killed it entirely. So was it a mistake to go with the trust Biden strategy? Yes. No, uh, because I don't <laughs> think we would have had any other option. Uh, the reality is even if you had not passed uh, infrastructure, you still wouldn't have had uh, Build Back better uh, in its form. So the question is, do you think infrastructure did marginally more good than uh, harm for society? I think it did. A significant amount of good. It took out lead pipes and uh, expanded rural broadband. It uh, helped create construction jobs. Now, I still think we need uh, the climate provisions and a lot of what was in Build Back Better, uh, and we're working to get it, getting it. But candidly, it's not going to be uh, what it was uh, that the House passed. So, uh, well, the the fact is uh, that that was not the argument at the time. Let's be honest. Right, the argument at the time was we should trust Biden, and that he had a secret plan, and that he had an agreement with Manchin, and they they were going to pass Build Back Better. Uh, are you saying now that no, that was never the deal, and you guys knew Build Back Better was going to be killed by Manchin, or did Biden have no plan at all? Because it's one or the other. It's a fair question. I always thought there was a risk. I didn't think it was a short. Uh, I just want to pause because. Um, there's a flaw with Ro Khanna's analysis. It is true that there are some good things in the bipartisan infrastructure proposal, right? Replacing a lot of lead pipes, not all, but a lot. Um, on top of that, there's the investments in broadband. And that is important. Um, but overall, it is a net negative. And I want to um, remind you all of this really insightful thread from AOC. So she talked about why if you just passed bipartisan infrastructure but not build back better, 
we are net doing more harm overall to the planet. So this was uh, from November 7th. So on the issue of climate, think of bipartisan infrastructure as a lock and build back better as the key. Locks only open with keys. Bipartisan infrastructure climate benefits only unlock with Build Back Better's provisions. If we message uh, bipartisan infrastructure as good on climate alone, when it's not, we stop the pressure for Build Back Better's passage. Do not let this happen. The desire to pass both together isn't the unnuanced stance some pundits think it is. Bipartisan infrastructure has a lot of bad stuff in it. That's how they got GOP votes. It also has a lot of good stuff in it what you're hearing on TV. Passing Build Back Better unlocks bipartisan infrastructure's climate goods so the good prevails. If Build Back Better isn't delivered with bipartisan infrastructure's oil and gas locked in, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. That is what makes it a huge gamble. So again, we need to pressure to deliver the promise on Build Back Better. For anyone uh, middle-aged and younger, let's hope this ain't Kyoto all over again because we're going to live with the outcome. Spoiler alert, it is Kyoto all over again, and we will indeed live with the outcome. So with the way that all of infrastructure was split, right? We have the um, roads and bridges and then the human infrastructure, build back better. Um, overall, we are net doing more harm by just passing that portion overall to the planet. So I don't agree overall with Ro Khanna. I, I, I sympathize with the fact that there are some good things, but... The whole point of splitting it in two was to fuck over progressives. So that's why you had to hold strong and vote against it. But let's go ahead and um, let him finish here. But we thought that the best chance of passing Build Back Better was to get the president to put out a framework and get the president's uh, commitment around it. We felt pretty confident that that framework uh, would uh, allow the, the, the passage. Uh, obviously, that didn't work. But had we not voted for infrastructure, I don't think we would have had Build Back Better. We, this was our highest probability play of getting Build Back Better. It didn't work. Yeah. And the reason is because I don't think I don't think Senator Manchin cared enough about infrastructure uh, to uh, say, okay, if I vote for, I need infrastructure as much cinema did. Uh, so I just don't think, having been part of the conversations, that you know his concern is the spending, and he's fine with there be nothing. And so the question is, how do you get him? I think that's true in a lot of instances. But in the bipartisan infrastructure proposal, as AOC pointed out, I mean, there are a lot of things that corporate America wants. Hence why you got so many Republicans to go along with it. So I just don't agree with you. I think that he's misreading the situation and he's putting way too much faith into Joe Manchin. But thankfully, Jang actually addresses this, and he addresses comments that Ro Khanna made, which we talked about on my program a couple of days ago, or maybe it was last week. Um, either way, basically, Ro Khanna said, we really have to uh, give respect to Manchin, pay deference to Manchin, and, and let him come up with something, essentially. Um, his answer to that is not very persuasive, but I am glad that uh, Jang asked the question. For something, we thought this was the, the highest probability play. Obviously, it turned out uh, not to work in the case of Build Back Better. Yeah, uh, I don't agree. Uh, I think he really wanted the infrastructure bill because it was filled with corporate pork. And so that's what he- Yeah, lived. great point, Gamer G. Uh, don't forget, Manchin said he was okay with $4 trillion around Biden's inauguration. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. So to believe that he is sincere when he says I'm worried about the debt and the deficit, no, that's bullshit. That is complete bullshit. And uh, on CNN, uh, on the Sunday show, I think with Jake Tapper, he was talking about how uh, the military needs additional money for this Ukraine spat. So, you know, no concern whatsoever about, you know, the debt, the deficit doesn't care at all. You know, when it's something bad, when it's militarism, the price doesn't matter. But when it comes to helping people, that's when he's a deficit hawk. So, you know, don't listen to the deficit scolds because they always conveniently bring up their concern for the debt and the deficit when we're talking about helping normal Americans. On corporate pork. So if you had threatened his donors' money, uh, then that was your best chance. In fact, Great that's point. why he was upset, Ro. That's why he was upset that you exactly. guys were building infrastructure. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been upset at all. So, but now, okay, water on the bridge, although it isn't. Uh, it was a total debacle <laughs> and an obvious mistake. But uh, now, uh, now uh, you said last week, I believe we should give Manchin the deference and respect now to put something together that could be a consensus, meaning let him write the bill. In fact, you said give him the pen and let him write the bill. And then after you said that, uh, Manchin came out and said, yeah, here's my version of the bill, nothing, uh, it's dead. 
out. Yeah, and that's why what he said was such a bad look because he said this on Morning Joe and then like an hour or so after that, Manchin said this. Build Back Better. He's asked about Build Back Better and he says, what's Build Back Better? What's that? It's dead. That's what he said. So I feel like Jenk is trying so hard to get him to understand that they are plaguing you. They don't respect you in the way that you respect them. Play hardball. And it's it's so hard to watch because Real Connor just doesn't get it. Thank you so much, Nexus, for the tier one sub. I really appreciate that. And again, I don't I just want to be really clear here. You know, it's hard for me to get angry with Ro Connor because he's so willing to engage. He's such a good faith actor. But I, I think that being a good guy, being a good faith actor. You know, that doesn't mean that you can't be naive. And I feel like this is bordering on naivete with the way that he pays deference to Joe Manchin just uh, constantly. And I'm glad that Jenk Uger is calling him out here and desperately trying to get him to see the fucking light because holy shit, I, it's, just, it's, it's maddening to listen to. Oh, it does not prove that Manchin is a bad faith actor, only works for his donors, and never had any intention of passing any of Build Back Better. Yes. No, because that... Bro, stop! In the media, but he said he's not for the House version of Build Back Better. That, that as he put it, is dead. Uh, he is for a new bill. Now, what I have said mm -hmm. is that if you want to pass climate, and let's just be realistic, it's going to be a uphill midterm. It always is with the president's party. We have a narrow majority. Obviously, we're going to fight. But if we don't get climate in 2022, who knows when we get climate? So we have to, in my view, get climate. And to do that, you need Manchin's vote. And you need, he's okay with 400 and 500 billion of climate spending in a new bill. What I've said is give him the pen, as you pointed out, let him come up with a draft. Obviously, if there's some poison pill in there, uh, we wouldn't support it. But I think we can come to a consensus and get climate. And, and what are the alternatives? No climate for who knows how many years. So I'll get to the alternatives in a second. Uh, but I just uh, imagine thinking that Joe Manchin is going to write a sufficient climate bill. I just, uh, it's so frustrating. Manchin, as governor and also as a U.S. senator, he has done specific things to help protect his family's coal company. Any uh, climate legislation that he passed um, as a governor, he had carve-outs for his coal company. So that way, um, the waste from his coal company was characterized legally as uh, an alternative energy source in the same way that we characterize um wind, solar, and hydro as an alternative energy source. So Joe Manchin doesn't give a flying fuck about the environment. He just cares about his coal company. So, I mean, if he just gives people a blank check, if he says, okay, here's 400,000 progressives, go ahead and write what you want, create a civilian climate core, that's one thing. But do you honestly trust Joe Manchin to, in good faith, come to you with actually meaningful climate change legislation? Of course not. If you do, Ro, I've got an NFT to sell you. It's not going to happen. It's just, uh, it's just, God, I don't want to get mad at Ro because he is a good faith actor. He actually cares. But at some point, you've got to play hardball. If you care about these issues, and I believe Ro cares about these issues, you have to play hardball at some point point because rolling over being subservient to fucking joe manchin being overly deferential it's not working question on on the current strategy so are you saying that you think joe manchin is going to write a build back better bill first of all let's right? just note that he's now president uh biden's agenda is totally irrelevant we're literally saying i mean i'm not saying it you're saying it and it appears biden and pelosi and schumer are saying it let Manchin write whatever he wants. So, okay, that's we don't even have to ask that question. Apparently, he's president, uh, even though nobody in the country voted for him outside of West Virginia. But okay, even accepting that, do you really think he's going to write a bill that is going to have meaningful climate legislation? He he owns a coal company. His top donors right. are fossil fuel uh, companies. I have that at approximately 0% chance of happening. So let me ask you both in that way, is it it's binary, is it even gonna happen? And then second of all, if you think it is gonna happen, what on God's green earth would Manchin's donors find acceptable that they would put in the bill? Well, first of all, as you know, the clean electricity program is already out of the Build Back Better. And that uh, there are provisions that I would want in, uh, that including a methane fee and the fossil fuel subsidies, that aren't going to pass a Senate. So 
obviously he's not going to write the bill that I would write uh, or that progressives would write. But I mean, try to use that against him. You know, just a few minutes ago, Ro Connor said that uh, Joe Manchin is a deficit hawk. So, okay, aren't fossil fuel subsidies spendy? Can't you try to use that against them? Because in theory, if you are a deficit hawk, you would be opposed to this unnecessary spending. But of course not. You know, Joe Manchin, he wants these subsidies. He's a coal baron. So use this against them. I mean, you have so much ammunition. But Rose is too nice of a person. Maybe he's conflict averse. I, I sympathize with that. I am too, to an extent. But I it's just really frustrating. Or that even President Biden would write. But where he will be fine, in my opinion, uh, is four to five hundred billion dollars of investment in renewable energy, electric vehicles, uh, in solar, hey in, John, uh, welcome. building out batteries and building out the infrastructure, the smart grid, and that's just significant. That's the biggest investment in climate we've uh, ever made. So, is it uh, perfect? No. Uh, but is it much better than not having those investments? Absolutely. And he's always said he's for the innovation investments. Where he gets a concern is where there's going to be a price on fossil fuel and carbon. Some of us would want end of fossil fuel subsidies uh, price on methane. Uh, and I'm acknowledging that may not make it in, but I still rather have 500 billion of climate investment than nothing. Okay. I, I you know, I what? get You're, it. You've at least convinced me that there is a, a tiny percentage chance that something exists. Uh, and imagine has to hurry up and get solar donors and uh, electric car donors, <laughs> and once he gets uh, checks from them, maybe there's a prayer that some version of that uh, could pass. What else would be in the bill? He, uh, as I understand from his public comments, is four, three-year-old and four-year-olds getting uh, a preschool, and West Virginia already has this, so this is not a hard lift. But it'd be a big deal to make sure every three and four-year-old gets a preschool. I love how we all have to basically hope and pray that this fucking dipshit from this small state lets us have these fucking incrementalist incremental solutions like you you take a good policy you know you cut it in half you means test it then you cut it in half again and means test it even more and so we just have to like hope and pray and cross our fingers that he's going to be kind enough to let us fucking have some crumbs uh and that simultaneously him and his colleague Kristen Cinema are both going to fucking budget what is what a shitty system we need to abolish the fucking senate i feel like that's the default position for everyone on the left it has to be abolish the senate okay you should not have two senators if your state has three people living there i'm sorry what a stupid concept our entire political system is so fucked almost beyond repair um we have a supreme court a fucking judicial system that really is, you know our human rights our civil rights and civil liberties hinges on the health and well-being of 80 plus year olds in the Supreme Court. Uh, we have an electoral college that can literally subvert the will of the people. A presidential pr candidate can get more votes than their opponent and still lose the presidency. How fucked from top to bottom is this system? Because it's such a fucked system, we have to grovel at the feet of these fucking coal barons and beg them to do a little bit to maybe save the planet from catastrophic climate change. It's just unfucking real. What's the population of West Virginia, by the way? Let me look this up. Like, how many people actually live in this state? So, 1.79 million people live in West Virginia. Now, how many people voted for uh, Joe Manchin? He got 290,000 votes. 290,000 votes. So these people get to basically, they elected someone who controls our entire political system. What is that? What a dumb system. How fucking stupid. This isn't representation. This is insane. Insane. And the binary choice between uh, Republican light or extreme Republican. It's just, like, what is this? What a terrible fucking system. Sorry, folks, the senator from this state who got 300,000 votes, who's representing, I use the word representation, you know, very charitably here, has just like under 2 million. They get to control the course of humanity, the future of humanity. How insane is that? Jesus Christ. That's a great point, Emo Dragon. Of the 290,000 Democrats that voted for Joe Manchin, how many of them voted for Paul and Jean Swergen at first? How many of them were voting strategically because they felt like Patrick Morrissey or Morrison uh, was worse. 
So you have at least a third of those people unenthusiastically voting for Joe Manchin. And this one fuckface gets to control climate policy for what, the next 10 years at this pivotal moment? It's just, this is not what democracy is supposed to be. I mean, to the extent that we have a democracy in the U.S., it's fatally flawed. It's hanging on by a thread, what we've got. It's just, it's so frustrating. It is so frustrating. And, you know, in the event we ever were to have some sort of reform, we get rid of the electoral college, we do um, electoral reform, so we have multiple parties. Well, the problem is that we live in a capitalist system. So if we get like a multi-party system someday, which will never happen because nobody's fighting for it or even knows how to do that. Uh, but if we get a multi-party system, then how long before capitalism corrupts those parties? It's just our whole system is fundamentally flawed and people need to think deeper. It's not just about, oh, the politicians, the makeup of Congress currently is bad. And when we replace these politicians, when we have a better lineup of people in Congress, then things will change. When we get millennials and Gen Zers in Congress, things will change. No, the whole system is flawed. It is built this way. It is fundamentally fucked. So until people start really zeroing in on these systemic issues with our country, nothing is going to change. Nothing.